All right. Today is this day. Alternator day. This is an old 10 or 12 SI, somewhere in there. Um, doesn't seem to be charging, but I don't necessarily know if it's faulty with this or if there's an issue with the wiring. This is a CS130 alternator. And while they both do the same thing by allowing the charge a battery and provide power to your car, um, there is some slight differences. So this one, if it's either a 10 or 12, I'm not 100% sure, is a 65 amp alternator. CS130 is, if I remember correctly, 105 amps. So if you are planning on doing things like electric radiators or upgrading the audio or anything in your car, you'll want to switch these. And what's the nice thing about these two alternators is that even though you can clearly see how much of a size difference there are, there's, they share a lot of similarities in their mounting techniques. And by what that, what I mean is, if you look here, this mounts on the bottom, this is the old one, and this is the bottom mount as well. If we take some calipers, you see they come in at around about 1.99 or just say um, two inches. And if you look at the old one, it fits exactly over it because the mounts are exactly the same on the bottom. And then if you come to the top and you measure the top one, you can see it's 0 0.654655. And if you go to the old one, You can see the top's a little bit bigger than the old than the new one, um, but you don't have to worry about that because the top mount isn't as important. So seven six, but the top mount isn't as important as the bottom mount. And the reason for that is is that your bottom mount is what's going to dictate your spacing for your pulley. And what you can see here on this one is my car was running a. a a ribbed pulley on this one and not a v-belt and this one already came with it they're exactly the same so it's a switch it's a direct switch over for that as well um the one thing you may have to do on these is for example on mine um the mount bolt so this is the mount hole for the bottom and this is the mount hole for the top up here um, you can see that the bolt doesn't fit in the top but it fits in the bottom just like the other one um, on this particular one that I purchased, the mount hole for the bottom was on the top. So I had to flip this around. And all you have to do for that is there's three, there's three screws on the outside of the case that you undo on the bottom. It's just a quarter inch bit. You then undo this nut, this whole fan pulley nut comes up and off. Take these three, three down here out. This whole case will lift up and then you can just rotate it 180 degrees and then it'll put it within the vicinity of where it should be to mount. The other thing that's different about these is the plug. So you can see the CS130 has this old, newer style plug where on this old version, it's only this two prong plug. Now it's two prongs there and one here and here it's four pins. Yeah, four pins in the hole and one there. Now, even though this is four pins, both of these can still act like a three wire just by simply using specific wires across this pin. So all you will be end up doing is using this, which is your feed to your, um, to your battery. And then this one here will use two wires, which is one to the, um, to the post on the firewall. And the other one is for the, uh, for the dash battery issue in the, in the, in the car. And If you get the plug for it off the vehicle that you strip, you'll see that it comes with three wires. And those three wires can be used or depending on which plug or which version you have, may not. Um, for me, uh, this is an SLFP uh, version. And if you look at a wiring diagram that I have here, so this is the SFLP plug. You can see um, the battery terminal here, which runs to the factory jun junction block, but I'm running that directly to um, to the, the the to the battery. I can't remember if it's the battery or if it's the the fuse block down there. Um, 
yeah, I'm running, so I'm running this battery terminal directly to the alternator. And then you'll see the S wire here, which runs up to the junction block, which is the red piece right there. And then the L, which feeds back in, and that will go to um, the dash light. So this plug, this SFLP plug, has the two wires that are labeled F and L. So L goes to the dash light, F goes to the connector on the firewall. And it's just a matter of splicing the wires that I already have running off of there. So this wiring harness here has two wires on it. So this has two wires on it. And these two wires feed, one feeds, so this red one feeds to the junction block and this other one feeds to the dash light in the car. So it's a fairly straightforward swap um, because this bottom ear is the same as this one here. Uh, depending, for me, for example, I have this spacer. This spacer works the same between this one and this one. So for me, um, it's a straight bolt up. And if I take you over to the car, I can show you that. And here's the alternator. And as you can see, I can tighten it up. The spacer fits, the bolt does up as it normally does. This fits perfectly fine. Grab the alternator belt. This is going to be not gonna work very well quite yet because I still have, I don't have the crank one on. Um, and then basically you're looking for straightness and this is nice and, par nice and straight between this pulley and this pulley. So I got no alignment issues. You know, just bringing you guys in here a little better. So you can see there, that's that spacer. Fits exactly the same as the old alternator. Um, the only thing that I don't necessarily like about alternators and these valve covers is that this stud is back here for, for where the power goes. Um, which I mean, it's not a really big deal. I'm just not overly a big fan of the spacing between that, but it's fine. Um, I'll get a boot or something to go over that and it'll be fine. Um, so now, you can see it doesn't move. We don't have, um, we don't have the, um, the upper bracket on here yet. I do have this old bracket here. Um, the problem with this though, is that when you attach it um, to the water pump, to the alternator, this intake manifold doesn't have a proper support place down there for it. So um, what I'll probably do is I'll get one of those Heim joint configurations and then use that to um, put this, tighten up the spacing and stuff in between there. So that's about it for mounting it. Okay, so I just looked at my wiring again and my plug has S, F, and L. S is sense, which it's nice because it's still the nice thick wire, so I'll run that one to the firewall to the, uh, the power side of that and then it's got F which I don't need but I'm not going to cut it off because I don't know how this alternator is going to technically work with this car because this car's got some funky wiring going on in it so this is the F wire which I'm just going to kind of set to its uh, set aside here and then this wire which is L is what's going to feed the dash light I got a splice in this so I'm going to cut that splice out because I don't need it anymore okay so L goes to the dash for the light which is easy to remember so this is my firewall connection
Okay, so this is the sense wire here, which I've now ran back to the firewall, put a new terminal to it and terminal end on it, crimped it. It's now bolted on. So I put it on, I used to have it on this side here, but this side feeds from the battery. So what I decided is I was gonna put it on this side, which is what feeds it from the accessories and all the power stuff and everything that's going through the system. And basically what this wire is responsible for is that say you had an electric fan and you turned it on and now your car goes from you know 14.4 volts to 13.3 the alternator goes oh no we need more juice and it then ramps up and gives it more power um this is the l wire that i've got connected here i just got it spliced and taped for now this is the other wire that's just going to kind of sit and chill it's the f wire which i don't think we're going to need um i think for this we're just going to need the uh, s and f s and l wire um because i think the f wire is basically just sort of a way so that if the alternator was to quit charging from my understanding is that if the f wire basically says hey alternator is not charging uh we need a way to make sure it keeps charging and what happens is is if your light say in your dash goes out your alternator doesn't know to properly uh charge and it may die so i think the f wire is basically a way for it to go oh no we've got nothing so we need to kick the alternator on to sort of charge up the battery so that's you know in a nutshell uh for this car in particular which is my camaro um this sort of applies to a lot of vehicles of this of this era because a lot of gm vehicles in this day in this time um was usually fed from a single brown wire that comes out of the bulkhead connector and that single brown wire is what basically triggers the alternator to turn on and start charging and once it's doing that then the chart the alternator just keeps running and just goes from there so that's why you can turn the cs 130 which is a four technically five because you got the back you got the the heavy wire on the back plus the plug but um for our purposes we're just converting it into a three wire alternator so you got the sense you got the light and you got the the, the one for the battery terminal and that's about it um i won't know if it's charging uh the system until i have the uh, uh the, the system the, the car back up and running and once i have that then i will know if it's charging basically uh before i mean i could get the alternator charged but you know this the, the old alternator checked and see if it's charging but honestly I, I i don't care um this thing is old it's only 65 amps you know this guy here is newer it's 105 amps i'm going to run electric fans on this thing i'm going to be putting the fog lights in it you know i, I want to make sure that this car has enough juice to do whatever i'm going to be asking for it and with the 105 amps I know that'll be that'll be more than capable um but yeah so that's that's pretty much it it's just the alternator itself it, it's a straight bolt-in you may have to do some minor adjustments like the the clocking position but i find um that that may be the case for a lot of different alternators it, it, your mileage may vary on that uh the wiring fairly straightforward so hopefully when i get the car running um there'll be no issues and this thing will just start charging and way we go and that'll be great because um the charging system on this thing and the radiator are the last two things that are that i'm dealing with and one of those two are now checked off so the next will be uh, dealing with the radiator and once i have that um i'll get the car running and if it's charging the wheels go on and this thing can be dry, driven um so yeah so just a short simple easy one today you know doing these doing this swap on this car isn't that uh involved uh or that difficult you know it's just a couple of quick tools i think for the um the nut on the uh the pulley for for mine was uh 15 16 and to undo the three these three bolts screws whatever you want to call them it was quarter inch pop the the main nut off pulled the whole front assembly off Pull the three screws bolts out and basically gave it 180 degree rotation and everything just went in no problem another reason why i like the cs34 is because it's a lot smaller um that old alternator looked like a giant brick sitting in there and it, not that it's any big problem but you know aesthetics i like the cs130 version better so that's also in there so 
just going to keep this a short little quick one make it simple make it fast for you guys uh i release a lot of long videos and i know that um but you know it's it's difficult to decide if you're going to make a 10 12 minute video or a 30 minute video and need to decide to do just a quick snip of just what was done or what's been happening or go through the long big process of procedure and this one in particular wasn't that difficult or that long so it made it go pretty quick just especially since it was almost a direct swap all of like two or three minutes of you know it's clock reclocking the alternator and doing some wiring but then other than that that's it so i will leave you guys here and i will see you in the next one so thank you and thanks for watching